And, Your Honor, the state has a matter we would like. We need to take up ex parte with the court. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, counsel, is there anything else I need to cover with you before we uh, before we recess uh, until Monday? Got it. Yes, Mr. B- Mr. Botts. Mr. Botts, you need to use the microphone, sir. All right. <laughs> is it working now? Can you hear me fine? Yes, sir. All right. Your Honor, we started this whole fiasco out with whether the state knew that Mr. Copeland was going to take the Fifth Amendment when he took the stand. And if so, was that proper or improper to put him up on the stand, knowing that they were going to... You have to speak up, sir. And if you could hold the microphone, it'd probably be better. That he was going to assert the fifth. And I know that they did know that he was going to take the fifth because I heard it said outside right before I walked into court. I even said... Officer, then why didn't you, as an officer of the court, tell me before before we uh, before we took his testimony? I told Mr. Steele. No, 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 no. Why didn't you, as an officer of this court, tell me? Well, then that's my. I got a problem with you now. Well, that's fine. I mean, Uh, I got a problem with you now. Well, I I would suggest you don't say any more. I've already said it. I know that, sir. And the problem is you should have told me if that were your case, then you've just made an argument that was that could we didn't even need to have because I could have certainly asked him based upon your proffer. Now you want to have it both ways. You can't do that. Your Honor, I thought the state knew that. And, I- and that's not what the point is. The point is you as an advocate is you should have to- you should have told me. Both sides have an equal responsibility under the rules of professional responsibility. Okay, as long as we're both responsible, that's fine. All right, have a seat, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, I have a request to the court. Is that okay? No. What's your request, sir? Um, so in the attempt to avoid any spurious allegations moving forward, I would ask that Your Honor order that the deputies transport Mr. Copeland to the jail completely separate from any... Yeah, I was going to... Thank you for reminding me of that. that In in our order... Wait, wait, just one second. In the order of incarceration, I'm going to... um, I also have a keep separate order for him. For the transportation and the housing, because none of these gentlemen are going to say anything to him, but I don't even want anyone to claim that he did. I think that that's fair enough, and that's a good suggestion. All right. We'll prepare. Yeah. Yes, Lieutenant Walker. So that will not be an issue. OK. OK. But we'll, but we'll go ahead and have him. If you could also have him housed separately, too. OK. OK. Thank you. Thank you, madam. All right. Anything else? Councils? All right. Take a couple deep breaths this weekend. Take a knee um, and um, come back on Monday and let's. Uh, Let's get after it again, okay? All right, we'll see you on Monday morning at 8.30, okay? Can you um, get us the list of names and then any exhibits for Monday? I think the only per- I, I don't know who is being called. Uh, we can find out. Um, Ms. Love and Ms. Hilton and Mr. Atkins, at, who is going to be called? Let's assume that Mr. Copeland invokes again. Yeah. Is uh, mm-hmm. do you have some other witnesses that we can we can take up at that point? Your Honor, um, we will apprise after we look at and reevaluate where we are because our order of proof was building blocks that at this point began with Mr. Copeland, and there are certain things that have to take place before we can tell them anything. So okay. we need Fair to enough. we have to do that. We have to deal with that and where we are right now. All right, and um, that's just where we are. Okay. Well, be thinking about the what scenarios you'd like to you'd like to have the court look at. Um, yes, Your depending Honor. upon whether or not he, uh, Mr. Copeland, decides he'd like to um, invoke his privilege again. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. And Your Honor, go ahead, Madam. 
Mr. Sharp, you can have the floor. Yes. Could, could, I'm just going to ask a courtesy of the deputies. Could we just keep uh, our clients here for just five minutes after court and 15 minutes after court ends? Um, the attorneys would like to have a discussion with our clients. I'm um, Lieutenant Walker. And, and Your Honor, the state has a matter we would like, we need to take up ex parte with the court. Okay. All right. And Your Honor, the state has a matter we would like, we need to take up ex parte with the court. Okay. All right. Um, Lieutenant Walker has been asked by defense counsels um, as a corporeal body for them to be able to talk with their clients um, once you clear the courtroom. Yes. Can you make that happen? Yes. Okay. All right. So once everybody, once everybody is um, cleared the courtroom, um, you just secure it and let them be in here uh, along with their clients. Okay. 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 Oh yeah. We, we, once once we get once we go down. Okay. Yeah. I'll make that okay. Thank All right. You. Okay. Um, One last thing, Your Honor. Um, I just thought of this. Your Honor probably already thought of this. Um, the no contact order. Mr. Copeland should probably also include not just these gentlemen, but other gentlemen that are on this indictment that are not sitting for trial. I think that would probably be. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, okay. We'll see you Monday. Okay. 830. We're in recess. For deal with Chris, just smash that bell. For the UPC, you smash it, just smash it. Hit that like for deal with Chris, For deal with Chris, just smash that bell. For the UPC, you smash it, just smash it. Hit that like for deal with Chris, John.